Jaden is the fusion guy. He relies on polymerization in almost every duel, calling out a multitude of different fusion monsters, often finding the perfect tool to deal with the current situation. It seems like any two elemental heroes can fuse to bring out something from the extra deck. Literally so in the main game. But what about the anime? I'm going to be outlining every fusion monster Jaden used in the anime to try to answer that question. How big is Jaden's extra deck? I'm going to start with the oddball category, which may or may not factor into the end tally. It depends on how you feel about it. In exactly one duel to try to inspire Chaz, Jaden uses Ojama Knight. I seriously doubt that this card is still in his extra deck, but it's still worth mentioning. There are also a couple evolved elemental heroes whose inclusion is debatable, starting with Neo Bubble Man, which was a fusion monster in the anime. Additionally, Clay Guardian is a similar anime-only fusion monster, which has not yet appeared in the TCG. Speaking of which, did you know that Nex only has two targets, Marine Dolphin and Twinkle Moss? Both of which have slightly upgraded effects over their main deck counterparts. I sort of feel like we're missing out on four additional Nex Neospatians, but if they were released, they'd probably be pretty underwhelming given the precedent. Keep Marine Dolphin in mind for later, though. Finally, there is Naos Wiseman, a fusion between Naos and Yubel. Well, at least in the anime, and very briefly in the KCG. This is also a main deck effect monster in the TCG, but I'm going to be lumping it into the oddball category, leading to a total of the plus six question mark suffix, which will make more sense when we get to the real count. For the classic elemental heroes, I'm going to start with Avian, Burstanatrix, Clayman, Bubbleman, and Sparkman, getting to the wilder core heroes a little bit later. Avion and Burstinatrix make Flame Wingman, Burstinatrix and Clayman make Rampart Blaster, Avian and Bubbleman make Mariner, Burstinatrix and Bubbleman make Steam Healer, Clayman and Bubbleman make Mudballman, and then Sparkman and Clayman make Thunder Giant. There's actually evidence that Jaden plays two copies of Thunder Giant in episode 23. As a quick aside, unless stated otherwise, I will be assuming one copy of each card is being played, because, you know, you only play one copy of your best cards. But that joke breaks down when we're talking about the extra deck. Because extra deck space is so tight, one copy of an ace monster is more understandable. Jaden doesn't actually have an extra deck though. He still uses a fusion deck, last protagonist to do so, I guess. And although some of the games and the official tournament stipulations put limitations on the fusion deck, it was more or less unrestricted in size at the time. Well, probably. I guess there's some gray area when Jaden is brought into the future and super polymerization bonds beyond time, but I'm getting way off track already. Moving on from wind, fire, earth, water, and lightning, we have a few more interesting choices of elements. Metal and Blade Edge, Darkness and Necroshade, and Manliness in Wildheart. Uh, moving on. Wildheart and Avian make Wild Wingman. Blade Edge and Sparkman make Plasma Vice. Sparkman and Necroshade make Dark Bright. Blade Edge and Wildheart make Wild Edge. And Necroshade plus Wildheart make Necroid Shaman. And just look at the pattern that's forming. Outside of Wild Wingman and Thunder Giant, it looks like we have two pretty distinct sets of heroes. The four Aristotelian elements, and then the weird ones. But those are just the fusions based on two heroes. If we add a third axis, we can fuse Avian, Sparkman, and Bubbleman together to form Tempest. Then, cheating a little bit, if we fuse Flame Wingman with Sparkman, we can make Shining Flare Wingman which I guess is an advanced fusion, since it would take two polymerizations, or fusion gate, or even the anime exclusive double fusion. Then, to round out the main hero lineup, we have Electrum, requiring the four original heroes, Avian, Pristanatrix, Clayman, and Bubbleman. Sticking with the classic hero lineup for a minute, what if we replace polymerization with its sinister counterpart, Dark Fusion? Well, you get evil heroes. We can combine Avian and Burstinatrix to make Inferno Wing, Burstinatrix and Clayman to make Inferno Sniper, 
Clayman and Sparkman to make Lightning Golem. Then Avian and Wildheart to make Wild Cyclone. In addition, there are two more confirmed Evil Hero Fusions in Dark Gaia, which requires a Fiend and a Rock, and Malicious Fiend, which requires a Malicious Edge and a level 6 or higher Fiend type monster. Now, there is also a fair argument that the Evil Heroes would have been removed from Jaden's deck at the end of the third season. So this category will factor into the second count, that being the theoretical maximum. Moving on to the Neos fusions, we see a bit of a different pattern emerge, where these are contact fusions for the most part, thus not requiring polymerization, except for ones like Neos Knight, which comes from the Super Poly movie that I mentioned earlier. Its materials are Neos plus any warrior. I guess this could be synergy with the original heroes, since those are all warriors? Regardless, there's a full gamut of six elemental Neo fusions. Air Hummingbird and Neos make Air Neos. Flare Scarab and Neos make Flare Neos. Grandmull and Neos make Grand Neos. Aqua Dolphin and Neos make Aqua Neos. Dark Panther and Neos make Dark Neos. And Glow Moss and Neos make Glow Neos. Loving the naming convention, except when saying them all back to back like that, with each having a slight modification to the element, although Grand Neos does not really give away the Earth attribute. Then we have Bi Elemental Fusions. Air Hummingbird, Aqua Dolphin, and Neos come together to form Storm Neos. Flare Scarab, Grandmull, and Neos create Magma Neos. Then Dark Panther, Glow Moss, and Neos create Chaos Neos. And I just want to point out that I was today years old when I realized that these three monsters cover all six attributes. Very clever design. Moving on to the two final Neos fusions, we have Marine Neos, which uses the upgraded Aqua Dolphin I mentioned earlier. Told you it would be coming back. Then as the penultimate fusion, we have Rainbow Neos. And I know that I've been abridging card names for the sake of flow, but that's the whole name. Not Elemental Hero Rainbow Neos, just Rainbow Neos. Which means you can't tap into some of the generic hero support like Skyscraper. But I should probably mention the materials before I complain too much. Neos and an Ultimate Crystal Monster, which includes Rainbow Dragon or Rainbow Dark Dragon, as well as the fusions Rainbow Over Dragon, which I keep wanting to call Over the Rainbow Dragon, and Ultimate Crystal Rainbow Dragon, which sounds like a lot of work if you ask me. But we have one more fusion which trumps them all. Divine Neos. And oh boy, this summoning and material requirement must be fusion summoned using any five Neos, Neospace, Neospatian, or hero monsters, including at least one Neos or Neospace monster, one Neospatian monster, and one hero monster, and cannot be special summoned by other ways. It's very fitting that this would be the ultimate fusion monster in Jaden's extra deck, and pretty much in the series in general if you don't count the potentially non-canon duel with Yugi. That gives us a pretty reasonable total of 28 cards, 15 from the elemental heroes, and 13 Neospace fusions. But a very generous count would be 40, adding plus 12 from the oddball slash evil hero categories. Obviously, you can draw your conclusions about what appears to be the end of Jaden's endless extra deck, but technically is a word that gets me in a lot of trouble. And in this case, definitely invites it as new extra deck monsters are still being made for Jayden during the admittedly very long production cycle of this video. Plus, we haven't even mentioned an entire hero subgroup, those being the masked heroes, which Jayden used in the manga. Should those be included in the total? Not sure, but maybe in a part two. Beyond that, I intentionally left out UFO Roid Fighter because Cyrus played that monster and I don't think it should count. It's not even a hero, like that stopped Rainbow Neos, I mean. An even larger question is how many fusion monsters is Jaden capable of making? Not just the Omni Heroes or the fusions outside of the manga slash anime, but I'm talking about some of the weirder ones. Like First of the Dragons, which he could technically make with any two of the normal elemental heroes. I do love how this kind of deceptively simple question can spiral into all sorts of edge cases and even inspire more silly questions. 
But for now, that's going to have to be the end of this topic.